हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर संगीता फ्रॉम डेंटल पाठशाला वेर वी हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड एंड लर्न डेंटिस्ट्री बेटर एंड इजी वे एंड ऑन द स्पेशल रिक्वेस्ट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट फ्लोराइड्स टुडे सो फ्लोराइड एज वी ऑल नो इज द मोस्ट इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिव एलिमेंट वी हैव ऑल स्टडीड दिस इन द केमिस्ट्री विद एन एटॉमिक नंबर ऑफ नाइन एंड एटॉमिक वेट ऑफ नाइनटीन एंड फ्लोराइड नेवर एग्जिस्ट इन द फ्री स्टेट इन द नेचर एंड इट इज प्रेजेंट इन नेचर एवरीवेयर इट इज प्रेजेंट इन एटमोस्फेयर बायो Atmosphere, lithosphere, and all the organisms, all the living organisms have fluoride in it, and it comes back. It is in the soil also, so fluoride is present everywhere. Fluoride word, it's derived from actually it is a Russian word, but in Latin word flor means the to flow. That means as we all know, fluoride is a flux material. So flow, it as we have used. as a flux in dentistry so flow means latin means to flow and if we talk about the greek floris means to disrupt so the, this terms means actually to flow and fluoride as we all know it has the physiological properties which is of great importance to the human health and it also plays an important role in prevalence of caries that is why we are reading this chapter so in the today's video we'll cover the mechanism of action systemic fluoride topical fluoride and the supplemental fluoride recommendation and in the next video we'll cover next half of the fluoride which is the types of fluoride the safety and the toxic dose and we'll talk about fluoride toxicity and some facts about the fluoride so let's get started with the fluoride before we get started make sure you subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon that way you get a notification as soon as i release a video lecture now as we all know fluoride decreases the prevalence of caries and this effect is known as cariostatic effect static means stopping uh, all of a sudden then we are stopping the caries that means to study this cariostatic effect of the fluoride we must know the structure of the enamel and the process of demineralization now this process we all are familiar with the structure of enamel we all are familiar with but let's just go through to understand it better now the enamel consist of hydroxy apatite crystals as we all know now these crystals are arranged in the rod like structures which run parallel to the long axis and there are some structural imperfections present between these enamel crystals or between the spaces between these rods now these imperfections are the carbonates or the magnesium so the carbonates or the magnesium which are present within the enamel crystals it increases the solubility against the acid so it increases the acid solubility of the enamel of the crystal now the action of fluoride we are going to be divided into these components so coming to the pre eruptive incorporation that means we are studying the fluoride is incorporated before a teeth is erupted so pre eruptive exposure of the fluoride it produces teeth which are more resistant to the caries so before erupting a teeth before a teeth is developed we are actually making it resistant to caries by making the pit and fissures shallow now if the pit and fissures are shallow that means the the food is going to stick less and thus the caries are reduced and also the post eruptive exposure has some significant effects now if the fluoride is present in the enamel before the tooth is erupted uh, at the pre eruptive stage it increases the crystal size it or the crystal the crystallinity is also improved and there is decreased acid solubility we will study this bacteria releases acid and this dissolves the crystals so the incorporation of fluoride at the pre eruptive stage actually reduces the acid effect or reduces the acid solubility of the enamel and also the cusp are more rounded and the fissure pattern so therefore the effect of fluoride is good and the caries is diminished 
so coming to the post eruptive incorporation now what happens is fluorides continue to enter the enamel surface and what it does is actually it changes the structure of the enamel now earlier when hydroxy apatite was present in the structure of enamel now it is converted to fluor apatite and the fluor hydroxy apatite crystals now these the hydroxy apatite crystals with earlier which were the hydroxy apatite crystals now they are converted to fluor apatite and fluor hydroxy apatite cluster and these fluoride rich crystals the crystals containing fluoride these are less acid soluble now these crystals are less acid soluble that means that means when the bacteria is releasing acid it is not dissolving the crystals of enamel now coming to the remineralization now to understand remineralization you should understand first what is demineralization so the minerals which are present in the enamel of the tooth are actually in exchange with they exchange the minerals which are present in the saliva and this exchange makes an equilibrium so the uh, so the equilibrium is actually disturbed when the bacteria attacks the teeth when the bacteria when the bacteria attacks the teeth now what happens is it produces acid so when the bacteria attacks the teeth and it it produces some acid now acid is produced now this acid is produced from the fermentation of carbohydrate and less so this decreases there is a drop in the ph of the plaque on the enamel surface and the subsurface of the teeth so surface and the subsurface of the teeth now has reduced ph and the minerals like calcium and phosphate actually dissolves in this less ph in this acidic ph and when the crystals are dissolved this process is known as demineralizations so this is demineralization process and it actually get reversed when we incorporate fluoride into it so incorporation of fluoride actually reverse this process which we call as remineralization process now fluoride has a magical power the surface and the subsurface of the enamel actually absorbs and holds the mineral and fluoride now enamels look fluoride as pizza as pizza in the lockdown and it grabs it immediately now since the fluoride has some magical power this fluoride it regrows the partially dissolved enamel the enamel which the bacteria ate fluoride returns it back it regrows crystals back and all the diseased crystals which are damaged from the acidic effect of the bacteria actually regrows and the regrowth of the fluoride the crystals which are grown from the fluoride are actually more acid resistance now the crystals which the fluoride has made they are more acid resistant and actually they have high concentration of fluoride in it and this actually explains the white spots now white spots are the initial the initial spots of caries these are the rough and chalky uh, spots of caries and when we incorporate fluoride into it then these spots become smooth and shiny and the surface of this initial caries the surface of this white spot should not be probed too hard because actually this area is mineral deficient and it is weak so it may break so therefore we should not we should actually not put so much of pressure while probing the initial incipient caries and also we should provide we should treat topical application and allow that area to remineralize so the enamel crystals which have fluoride in it get embedded in the pellicle on the surface of the enamel now if this is the surface of the enamel and fluoride makes a shield over it so it it protects actually from the it makes a barrier now this i'm going to tell you a surprising thing about fluoride is fluoride cannot cross the cell membrane now it cannot cross the cell wall but still it can travel 
through the cell wall how you must be wondering how it happens when the bacteria actually produces now the bacteria produces acid right now this acid during the metabolism of ferment fermentable carbohydrate in form of like candies so we eat whatever we eat now these bacteria when it produces acid what happens is the hydrogen and the fluoride combine to form hydroxy fluoride now when the acid is formed there is decrease in the ph and some of the fluoride ions are present in the plaque fluid and it combined with the hydrogen fluid which forms the hydroxy fluoride hf now this h f actually diffuses rapidly diffuses in the cell membrane so this it actually diffuses in the cell membrane and once it is inside the cell membrane more of the hf more of the hydroxy fluoride from the outside comes inside now once it get inside the cell fluoride start its action it becomes superman now this fluoride hf which was earlier was outside the cell now it is inside the cell of the bacteria and it dissociates again to form hydrogen and fluoride and these fluoride ion interfere with the enzyme activity of the bacteria and it inhibits the plaque formation against and uh, against the progressing caries so it inhibits it stops the caries so this is about the mechanism of action of fluoride how the fluoride acts how the fluoride works and it inhibits the caries the karyostatic effects of the fluoride as we all know by this now that fluoride after ingestion can get absorbed and incorporated into the enamel and it can benefit our teeth before eruption it also benefit benefits the teeth after the eruption when it returns to the mouth in the saliva now fluoridated water uh, we are talking about the systemic fluoride first and then the topical fluoride the fluoridated water that is incorporating fluoride into the water into the drinking water is actually the most effective way as it provides both systemic and the topical effect also in at the community level it is the best thing to do now water fluoridation if we talk about is a in a concentration of 1 ppm that is 1 parts per millimeter that means 1 mg of fluoride in 1 liter of water per liter of water that means this much concentration of the fluoride 1 ppm concentration it reduces the caries up to 50% so we are lucky that we have so many states in india that we have high concentration of fluoride but even too much has its flaws the good thing about the water fluoridation is that no effort is required on the part of an individual at a community level this is the best thing and it is low cost now if we talk about the who recommendation for the level of fluoride in water so it is 0.7 to 1.2 parts per millimeter 0.7 to 1.2 ppm of the it depends on the community and the temperature and the climate actually of the place now in the cold climate 1.2 ppm of the fluoride can be given and for summer temperature high temperature region we can give up to 0.7 ppm of the fluoride now it actually depends on the climatic condition on the area actually so the who recommends 0.7 to 1.2 ppm of the fluoride in 1971 now coming to the different methods so coming to the systemic fluoride the water fluoridation which we have talked now we have school water fluoridation and dietary also the dentifrices so the dietary supplements can be milk fluoridation salt fluoridation so the community community water fluoridation actually reduces caries up to 50 to 60% now if we talk about the dietary supplements dietary supplement reduces fluoride up to 50 to 85% 50 to 80 which is the maximum 
the salt water fluoridation reduces the caries up to 40 percent so school water fluoridation is when there is adjustment of the fluoride concentration in the school in the water supply of a school now it prevents the caries also it is an alternative method of supplying the systemic fluoride to the children which are in the school the school going so school water fluoridation actually provide maximum karyostatic effect in the children in the school going children in the developing teeth so since children spend only six to eight hours of the time of the day actually in the school not rest of the day so concentration of fluoride is four to six times more for the school fluoridation because a child is only four to six to eight hours is present in the school so the concentration is six to eight times more than the water fluoridation so up to a concentration of five ppm so which is approximately five times uh, more is required to offset the less frequent intake now this method has also some disadvantages most of the child are five to six year old when they start their schools now so this doesn't provide pre-eruptive contact to the primary teeth now the pre-eruptive effect of the fluoride is not seen so also the schools are less than 180 days during a year so children don't receive complete effect of the fluoride if we use school water fluoridation so once a child is under the school only then you can provide the fluoride to the child now coming to the dietary supplements we have so many things in which we can administer the fluoride fluoridated milk fluoridated salt fluoride and sugar which is not much recommended also fluoride in citrus beverage drops vitamins lozenges tablets vitamins supplements so many things so coming to the milk fluoridation milk fluoridation is an alternative method to the water fluoridation for care, preventing the caries now milk fluoridation if we use 2.5 to 7 ppm of the fluoride in uh, this is the recommended dose for milk fluoridation of the fluoride level but also milk is not an ideal vehicle for the fluoride delivery as the absorption is slow in the milk the absorption of the fluoride is actually slow in the milk as compared to the water so salt fluoridation actually in countries like india is the best thing salt fluoridation it actually holds the good promise for underdeveloping countries like india where water fluoridation is not feasible because of the limited central water supply and also salt is the vehicle which is not even expensive and it is almost used in all the houses so fluoride supplied in the salt is usually ingested with the milk milk but the absorption is slow so coming to the topical fluorides we have professionally applied fluorides and the self applied fluorides now topical fluorides are actually the fluorides which are applied on the teeth which are applied on the erupted teeth so topical fluoride are the professionally applied fluoride either the dentist is applying the fluoride or an individual himself or herself is applying the fluoride now the professionally applied fluorides comes in a variety of solutions or gels actually it reduces caries up to 20 to 40 percent and we apply it in the tray we load it in the tray and then tray for four minutes and then we take a break of one minute and we also use saliva ejector we don't take more than two gram of the gel per day or 40 percent of the capacity of the tray because we don't want the fluoride the patient to engulf the fluoride to go into the system to go into the body so we'll talk about professionally applied fluoride in the coming video when we'll be talking about the types of fluoride so coming to the self applied fluoride we have the rinse mouth rinses actually are contraindicated in the children less than seven years of age we don't give mouth rinses because sometimes small kids they can drink the mouth rinse so we mouth rinse are contraindicated in the children less than seven years of age and the concentration which we give in the form of mouth rinse are if we are giving the weekly or fortnightly dose it is 0.2 percent and if we are giving the daily dose it is 0.05 percent 
so daily use is actually more beneficial and if we talk about the caries reduction for the mouth washes it is 16 to 50 percent if we only use the mouth rinse so it is the most common used solution for the mouth rinse is our sodium fluoride we'll talk about the different types of fluoride in that we'll study about it so coming to the toothpaste you must have seen advertisement in the tv that toothpaste with a fluoride fluoridated toothpaste almost all the toothpaste comes with a fluoride most of the toothpaste contains sodium monofluorophosphate or sodium fluoride. Now sodium fluoride you will see everywhere in a concentration of 1000 to 1450 or you can remember it as 1500 ppm or 1 to 1 1.45 mg per centimeter of the toothpaste. If we talk about 1 centimeter of the toothpaste, it contains 1 to 1 1.45 mg of the milligram of the fluoride. The toothpaste reduces caries. It depends on the area. Now, if we talk about the fluoridated area, it reduces 15% of the caries. And if we talk about the non-fluoridated area where the fluoride level is less, so it reduces caries up to 30%. The dose in the toothpaste is less for the children less than 7 years. Less than 7 years mouthwashes are contraindicated and also the dose less than 7 years have less than 500 ppm of the toothpaste. So toothpaste has less than 500 ppm because to reduce the risk of the mottling and also we have some desensitizing agent containing potassium chloride or formaldehyde also we have some anti-calculus agent which has fluoride and some antibacterial agents like triclosan also have fluoride if we talk about the recommended dose for the fluoride supplementation now for the children who are at high risk or who lives in the area where the supply of the fluoride is less so the recommended dose is from 6 months to 3 years, 0.25 milligram less than 0.3 parts per millimeters of fluoride. If the child is between 3 to 6 years, then if you are giving less than 0.3 ppm fluoride, then it should be 0.5 milligrams. And if it is 0.3 to 0.6 ppm fluoride, then it is 0.25 milligram. And if the child is between 6 up to 16 years of age, then 1 milligram of less than 0.3 ppm of fluoride and 0.5 milligram of 0.3 to 0.6 millimeter of fluoride. Instruction you should give as a dentist to the parents of the child is that children should brush twice daily using the fluoridated toothpaste, the fluoride toothpaste and the brushing using the fluoride toothpaste should start 6 months of age. The fluoridated toothpaste should start from the six months not before the six months so six months of the age is the correct time to start the fluoridated toothpaste and the parents should supervise the brushing for at least seven years seven years of the age to avoid the ingestion of the toothpaste and to ensure that adequate plaque removal so next video will cover the next half of the fluoride if you feel that you have learned something new today then go ahead and hit the comment box and like button because this helped me to help you skyrocket your career and knowledge while you stay at home with your family.